Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 9.0. And today is day 35. Today, we wrap up our training inside of the Designs applet with a few more tools that you can use for your social and print graphics. Let's dive into the Designs applet paintbrush and palette icon, ninth one down here. First of all, everything we've been doing so far, we've been creating from a template. You also do have the ability to actually import a design. So we're going to choose the import design. And what that's going to do is taking us back into WeBrand, but in a different area where we're going to get some additional options. So the first thing you can see here is it's import and edit any PDF. So if I click on that, it's basically going to say, hey, where do you want to pull them from? Here's your um, file explorer let's use let's say i wanted to redo our recognition yard signs for our agents All right that's a pdf document it's going to bring it in it's going to say hey is this the document that you wanted to make edits to i'm going to say yep i'm going to click on edit the pdf it's going to ask me to choose a unit of measure say great that document size looks correct i'll click on continue and then what it does is it basically essentially attempts to read all of the elements that are included in that PDF and then brings it in to WeBrand into the editor that you've already seen, known, and loved, right? So you can see that it's bringing it in right now. Now there's going to be some nuance. Typically, right, you can see on the screen here, it didn't quite, and this was probably because I should have set, I just kind of skipped the what size is it and I didn't bring in the right size. And so that's why I kind of crushed the letters and all of that kind of stuff. So if that ever looks wrong, you can always go back to home. <clears throat> that's going to take us back to this design screen and I can go back and edit and make sure, right? Hey, import and edit any PDF. I'm going to say 5% yard sign. The hard part is I don't know what that original file size was. So that's also important for you to know. Um, <clears throat> so here it is. We're going to say edit the PDF. Let's just say that this is 8.5 by 11. All right, so well, PDF document size 24 by 16. Actually, I do think that's the correct size because it was a yard sign that we were building. So let's see if we do it that way, if it brings it in correctly. And like I said, there's going to be some nuances, there's going to be some learning. Not every PDF is going to come in looking great. Here, this one came in looking a lot better. The only thing is that the shadow of the top 1% did not come in, uh, at least lined up. But I could click on this text box and see if I can line that back up roughly. Right, so I've got that option there. I can also just drag that down and then try and click on the other letters. Right, and those actually came in one at a time, which is interesting. So I could delete those out and then make the edits as I see fit. But it's a good start, right? I didn't have to start over from scratch. So that's number one. If you have a PDF that you've created in the past, maybe even for a different open house or a different brokerage you were at previously or something along those lines, someone has sent you something that you want to sort of R&D with permission, that's one of the options that you have is to import a PDF and then make edits to it yourself. The other thing is we've been starting from designs, templates. You can start from blank. So if you just want a blank palette, Marty, I just want a scratch piece of paper, if you will, <clears throat> you can use this start from blank option. And you're gonna see there are a ton of different options for you to start with that have all been sized appropriately. So the first ones there were social, and then you've got print-based assets as well. So just kind of depending on what you wanna create from scratch, you can see all of the different template sizes. In addition, you can just choose a template. That's going to take you back to that same screen um, that we typically go to. <clears throat> Excuse me, did not, but that's where that usually goes. I'm not sure why that didn't go there. Um, and then the other thing is we've got remove image background. So this is really helpful. Um, you guys have seen my thumbnails by now. So let's just pull up one of those. Let's say uh, I'm going to do 10.0 at some point in the future. I no longer want the blue and purple background. I want to change that background. So it's gonna basically take that photo and remove everything but the front facing items. So now I can go in and create a design or I could download this or I could add it to my assets. Adding it to your assets, I find this really helpful for your headshot. If you've got a background on your headshot but you want just your actual face body such that you can then drop it on any 
piece of artwork or whatever you're designing, that's pretty helpful to add to your assets. But right now I could click on continue. It's gonna say, hey, what kind of custom size do you want? I would go through that whole process and then I would be able to add in a new background if I wanted to go that route. So remove image background, pretty helpful. Import and edit any PDF, we talked about that. <clears throat> Down here, you're gonna see all of the designs I have previously created and there's a bunch of them. And sometimes that can get overwhelming. You can also organize those inside of this My Projects tab by clicking on New Folder. And this might be 66.9.0. I'm gonna create that as my folder. And you can see here's that new folder. And then I can actually click and drag things to that folder. You see how it lights up in blue? I can let go. And now that asset has been moved inside of that folder for future use. That way, if I just want to go to the folder and see everything that I've created, not sure why that didn't take. I probably missed it, didn't have it lined up. Let's try that one more time. <clears throat> well, and that may require a refresh to see that inside of it. But that's lined up, ready to go. So you've got your folders. Um, up here along the top as well, uh, we didn't cover it in too much detail. It's kind of a, a more advanced part of designs, but you do have the ability to create your own assets meaning your color palette, right? The colors you specifically use in all of your marketing, your fonts, you can bring in your own images, right? So images that you're gonna use on a regular basis, text, logos, right? You can see here's all the logos that I use for all the different Keller Williams offices I've been associated with, um, elements, videos, and files, all different things that you can bring in if there are some items that you use on a regular basis for your print, or social based design assets so that's it for today guys a little bit shorter but a wrap on designs again the ability to edit pdfs that you previously created starting a template from scratch removing image backgrounds and creating a folder tomorrow we're going to dive back to campaigns so we're going to go back up our list of applets Go into campaigns, it's all going to make sense why I started with designs and went back to campaigns because so many of those campaigns actually utilize designs that you know now know how to create. So stay tuned for that. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll look forward to speaking with you again real soon.